In this presentation, we will work a problem putting together a reconciliation of balance sheet governmental funds to the statement of net position. In other words, we're going to be reconciling between the fund balances and the government-wide type of activities. Balance sheet versus statement of net position. So in essence, we're reconciling the balance sheet type accounts between the two. Our information is going to be summarized up top. And really what we want to get an idea here is for those type of items that would be reconciling items. Why would they be reconciling items? Because the governmental funds will be on a modified accrual basis, whereas the governmental activity, the government wide at the government level will be on an accrual basis. Therefore, we'll have these reconciling type of items. When we consider these reconciling type of items, we can just basically imagine or think about what are the types of things that are going to be reconciling from the accrual basis that's being used in the government wide level and the modified type of accrual basis that's going to be used in the governmental level. And you'll recall those types of transactions that will differ on the on the fund balances where we have the modified accrual basis. We don't have long term uh, liabilities and long term assets, but instead are recording some of those transactions as the flow as they happen on basically what would be similar to income statement type of accounts. So things that are going to be related to long term assets or long term liabilities are generally going to be reported differently on the accrual basis, the standard accrual basis that we would think of to how they might be reported or will be reported in terms of the fund basis, governmental funds, those on the modified accrual basis. Our information is going to be up top. We have the deferred inflows of resources due to unavailability of resources to pay current expenditures. We're just basically going to group types of reconciling items. And as you think of each of these types of reconciling items, think about that differences between the modified accrual basis and the accrual basis and think about how these items might fit in there. And we'll just basically construct the reconciliation with these items. And then we've got the capital assets. At the 8, uh, 47, 855, you'll recall capital assets are going to be on an accrual basis, not on a modified accrual basis, therefore a difference. Accumulated depreciation, of course, related to those capital assets. Accrued interest on bonds and long-term notes payable. So you'll recall that the accrued interest is something that may not be recorded on the modified accrual basis. Bonds and long-term notes payable. Bonds and, no and notes payable are going to be long-term, therefore recorded as liabilities as we would expect on an accrual basis, not on a modified accrual basis. Unamortized premiums of bonds payable. Those are going to be related to the bonds as we've recorded the bonds and therefore also on a normal accrual basis as liabilities or premiums next to the liabilities uh, in the liability section and not uh, so with the modified accrual basis. Uh, compensated absences. We have total government fund balance and then we have the uh, total net position of government activities. So in essence, we're going to basically start our reconciliation. This is going to be our reconciliation process between, in essence, the two balance sheet kind of type of accounts between the governmental funds modified accrual and the uh, accrual basis of the government wide type of activities. We're going to start off with with the total government fund balance. So we're going to start off with the total government fund balance. That's going to be at the amount of the uh, 213, 319. I'm going to highlight these as we go. So I'm going to say that one we have found a home for. We have worked that one out. Let's make it green once that is done. The reconciling item, the bottom line of this statement, which we're not going to put here because I want to recalculate it, but the double check number, the weight, the place we want to be is that uh, 811, 486. So let's make that one yellow. That's where we want to end up at, but we don't want to just put that number down there. We want to calculate, get to it with the calculations. Then we're going to have the accounts reported for the governmental activities in the statement of net position are different because of pretty straightforward language. We're just going to say, hey, these are the things that are different between the two, the funds and the government wide level, the government activity level. And then we'll put some type of description down here. So we're going to say something like we're going to say, uh, the capital assets used in the governmental activities are not financial resources and therefore are not reported on uh, by the funds. So the capital assets is going to be one of the things that are going to be one of the differences because they're not reported by the funds because the funds are on a modified accrual basis and are not reporting the long term capital assets. So that's going to be one of the differences we have. We'll report these together in terms of the capital assets minus the accumulated depreciation so those are the subtracting those two there is our number if we highlight those we're going to say those have been completed we'll make them then green 
Next item, we're going to say. Next, we're going to pick up the deferred inflow of resources due to unavailability of resources to pay current expenditures. That item, we're going to pick up and call it other assets used in governmental activities are not financial resources and therefore are not reported by the funds. So we're going to pick up then this uh, 480 and we're going to make that item green like so. We're going to pick up the long-term liability. So that includes the bonds and long-term notes payable, the um, unamortized premium on the bonds payable, and the compensated absences. These are going to be long-term liabilities. They're going to be on the governmental side of things. However, not on the fund side of things, the governmental funds, because uh, those are on the modified accrual versus the accrual. Now, these are going to go on there as negative. So we're going to, be, we're going to name this, and we'll say that this is going to be... The long-term liabilities, including bonds payable, are not due and payable in current period and therefore are not reported in the funds. Now, I'm going to make this negative by saying negative sum. So, we're going to take the negative sum of these three items. We'll pick them up and there we have that. And we'll make them then green. So, we'll say that is, has been completed as well. Next one is that we have accrued interest on bonds and long-term notes payable. So the accrued interest, again, something that's going to be a difference between the two because we're not going to record the accrued interest on the, uh, the funds, but it will be reported at the government-wide level. So accrued interest payable is not due in the current period and therefore is not included in the funds. So we're going to say the, the accrued interest, same thing. It's going to be a negative. So we're going to pick up the negative of that number. And now we'll add these up. And if we have everything going the right way, we should get to then this uh, net position of governmental activity. So I'm going to say equals the sum of these. And that's going to give us the uh, 811,486. So that's our check figure. And so that's our reconciliation.